Is it possible to survive and thrive in an age of conflict and do it with power and grace? Um, I'm Karen Valencic, and this is a review of William Urey's new book, Possible, and how it interweaves with my book, Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. This is a second video of a three-part series where I take a look at both of these books and primarily uh, William Urey's book, Possible. If you're not familiar with Urey, he is the co-author of Getting to Yes, which is a classic book on negotiation. What I really love about this book is he takes us into his world where he's dealt with some huge international conflicts, the kind that you think there's no resolve in. For example, in Venezuela with Hugo Chavez and also in Colombia, the Civil War, he played an instrumental role. And also, as recently as um, North Korea and Trump when they were dealing with the missile crisis. I highly recommend his book, and I'm going to go through this second part, which I am patterning these videos after what he calls the three victories. The first video dealt with going to the balcony. This video is about building a golden bridge. He has three different areas that he explores in this, listening, creating, and attracting. And so first off, listening. To quote Yuri in his book, it's very easy to enter a conflict and think you have the answer. And that often backfires. And I have certainly found that to be true as well. As you enter into a conflict, the last thing you wanna do is come in with an answer because you will always create resistance. Yuri shares an Aesop's fable that actually I wasn't familiar with, but it has to do with an argument between the north wind and the sun. And they were arguing who had more power. And so they decided to take it to a test and they, they spied a shepherd boy that had a jacket on on earth. They wanted to contest who could get that shepherd boy to remove his jacket. So the north wind went first and the north wind blew and blew and blew, but it actually only caused the boy to wrap his jacket around him tighter. It did not get him to take his jacket off. So then the sun came along and the sun just beamed hot rays down on the shepherd boy and actually he motivated the boy to take his coat off because he was so warm. The difference between trying to force something to happen or trying to influence in some way. Now my work in Spiral Impact is all grounded in a martial art that's called Aikido. And Aikido is based upon position rather than force. And so that same dynamic is that if you go in trying to force an answer for people, you'll get more resistance and often make it worse. I find that so true in big conflicts is when you get focused so much on getting a solution to this conflict, you often alienate people. In a spiral impact, you move off of this and onto this, which is where the spiral comes from. So you engage people and see their perspective. Listening is such a big part of that. And when you listen with your ears and all of your being, you began to learn what the interest and the intent of the other party is. Listening, very important first step. So the second aspect of building that golden bridge is Yuri calls creating. You know, sometimes in conflicts, and this is true in the work I do in businesses, but it's also really true in some really big international conflicts, is, is you don't always have the luxury of getting people to agree to come into a room and have a conversation. What do you do? You have to create. And part of that gets to be creating and brainstorming. What is it that their interests are? And if you can put yourself out of your shoes and into theirs, what are the interests that they have that you can begin the negotiation with? And make a list of what you think those are. The other part of that creating that I love and I have not heard before is actually thinking about the other side. And what if they win? What if you get a good negotiation and a good resolution? What is their victory speech? 
because you want both parties to feel successful. So there's a win, win, win. And the victory speech is an important part of that. In Colombia, when they began those negotiations, they imagined what would the guerrilla's victory speech be. I love this idea of a victory speech for the other side, and actually for all sides, because we want to keep honor. Their victory speech, which is what the other side would say at the end of this negotiation is, we have fought bravely now for almost 50 years for the sacred cause of social justice. Many have fallen and we remember them in our hearts. Now we have a chance to continue our struggle for the rights of the people in a different way, through a struggle at the negotiation table and at the ballot box. Really powerful and that allowed, again, the guerrillas to have an easy way to resolve the conflict that had lasted for so long. So in my work with Spiral Impact, what I often have have people do is actually think about the needs and the fears of all the stakeholders involved in that issue. But the trick of that is, is I have the other stakeholders reflect on their opponents or their other departments in terms of what are their needs and fears around that issue. Really powerful when you can begin to look at the other side. And so I hope you can see that in that Aikido piece that I shared as well. The third aspect of building a golden bridge is attract. And that is now that you have listened and you now understand or you think you understand what the other side's interests are and what their victory speech is, now you begin to figure out how can I attract them to want to engage with me. And in a lot of my work in corporations and in, in businesses, people have that natural inclination because they can see how the lack of agreement can actually drain their resources and their energy and their creativity. Though situations like a civil war, you don't necessarily have that so obvious, although you do because a lot of people are dying. But how do you attract them to the negotiation table? One thing he suggests is to build a trust menu. And that is a, a list of pre-agreed upon activities that show the other side that they can trust you. Civil War situation, one of the things that they did was they stopped talking bad about each other in the media. And that was a signal. Now this isn't an agreement, this is a signal that yes, I want to negotiate. And perhaps in a business that is responding to messages, engaging a little bit more. So what are those signals that you can give to the other side that indicate, yes, I want to come to some agreement and some negotiation here. Another process that they used in terms of, again, attracting that negotiation, and this is something that was done in the Camp David Accords a long time ago with um, Egypt and Israel, finding agreement around the Sinai Peninsula. The, the concept is called one text. Now, we think of texting, but this was, this was evolved before we had texting. <laughs> but the idea is that you find a third neutral party between the two people. They create a statement of agreement, of a resolution about the conflict that is midway between each side. And they present it to each group. They, they ask not for agreement, but they ask around what the interests are, what's missing in that statement for them to be able to agree to something. And so they get more input around, again, interest. What are their interests? And then they go back and they rewrite that statement again. And again, this is not a solution. This is something that they can look at and respond to. Allows them to ask the questions in terms of determining what their interests are. Sometimes that can take a lot of different times. And I think in the Camp David Accord, they went back and forth, gosh, I think over 25 times to get there, but they got there. That's a really powerful way to do it. Can you imagine what it would be like to have freedom and control in your life in conflict situations? Well, that's exactly what you get when you master conflict. And now it's in your reach. I have created an online community with a course and weekly coaching, group coaching, to help you develop those skills. And you can actually earn a blue belt in conflict mastery. 
go to conflictmasterycourse.com and you can see the first lesson for free and some other materials as well. I hope to see you on a Zoom coaching call real soon. Thank you for tuning in to this video and please subscribe and ring that bell so you can see the third video in this series where I'm looking at possible and the power to get it done with grace. See you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.